Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, I'm actually going to cover a feature I completely missed in 22.2, which is actually an extension. Let's get stuck in. So the term extensions has been flying around in lots of different places. You've got dashboard extensions, which add capabilities to dashboards. You've got analytics extensions and table extensions. I've actually just done two videos on those particular types of extensions. But the way to think of an extension is just something that adds a capability onto Tableau in a particular area of the product. So for dashboard extensions, there was one added in 22.2, which allows you to let the user choose what elements of the dashboards can be used. But weirdly, it's called add filters. Let me show you how this works. So to do this, I'm in web edit. This is probably the easiest and quickest way to show you this. I was going to go ahead in and edit this particular dashboard. It's a default dashboard. You can find it in Tableau desktop. It's basically the Superstore workbook. And the exact tab we're on is shipping trends. Okay, so this is the dashboard we're on. I'm going to move my face to the top left hand side because I don't want it to get sort of in the way of what I'm doing. Now, the interesting thing about web edit, if you look to the bottom left, is that it has a slightly different layout. And I think this is the way desktop is actually heading. Uh, dashboarding and desktop will probably start to follow what web edit is doing. So if I drag the extension to the right hand side, you'll see that we get an extension pop up. This was actually another capability added recently where you have in product extension galleries. And then if I add the top extension, here, you can see it's the top one by 5,000 downloads. So it's it's by, by, a, by a country mile. There's another one here, dynamic sunburst. But if we just go ahead and select this one here, um, hopefully it will tell us a bit about the extension. And if you read this, it's called add filters extensions, but it does more than add filters. The add filters extension lets dashboard authors customize which filters are visible on a dashboard. Empower dashboard consumers to customize the dashboard by adding filters that meet specific needs. It aids in quicker exploration of data without the need to contact the original author to drive change requests. Add filters is an object that authors add to their dashboards, which then opens up this new capability for consumers. Once end users have a filter configuration that suits their needs, this is the core bit, they can create a custom view to save their work. So once they have what they need, they can save it. But I think this description is actually slightly misleading. Either the, either the extension has changed or it doesn't actually do what this description says. So let's go ahead and let me show you why. If I go ahead and add it to the dashboard, you'll see that it gets immediately added here to the bottom right hand side. And let me just switch to my red highlights. I don't like the green one. It's not easy to see. There it is. That's the extension we've added. And initially, what I don't like about these extensions sometimes is that it's not obvious that you need to do something to set them up. So this one, I've added it. It just sits there. But of course, this hasn't been set up. I actually need to go into this little drop down, select configure. And now we can actually set up this extension. And what this extension seems to imply is that you can add filters to the dashboard. But what it doesn't clarify is those filters need to already be on the dashboard, if that makes sense. They need to be already available on the dashboard. So you can see here the filters that it lets me show and hide are order, um, order quarter, order year, region, and ship mode. These are just the same filters that I've got here. So you see order year, order quarter, region, and ship mode. Those are the only filters that it's showing me. So I can go ahead and tick these and we pretty much have the feature set up. But then here's the interesting thing. You can also let the user hide whole sheets. So let me go ahead and select the sheet so you can see what those look like in the interface. And then it also seems to have other elements on the dashboard. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to add all of these just so you can see like the, the sort of the crazy capability of this feature. Uh, and then I'll set a background to black so we can see the, uh, the button itself very, very clearly. We'll set this to white. We'll set this to a nice, large, bold text. Let's hit apply. There you go. Filters on the bottom right. Nice, nice and easy to see. Uh, we'll say uh, click to change filters. Hit OK. And now we're pretty much ready to go. Um, if I click on it, you'll notice that it doesn't actually do much here because I'm still in the authoring view. What I need to do is publish it up then I'll actually be able to use the feature as it's intended. So let's go ahead and publish this up. And once it's published, we get a nice notification here to say that it's uh, published and we can go to the workbook directly. Let's go ahead to the workbook. And once we're in the workbook, you'll see we see all the dashboards that are in this particular workbook. We'll go to the shipping tab again and we should see we have our extension. Now, I didn't design the extension. I just set it to take up the entire bottom right hand side. I could have made it a much smaller button. But nonetheless, now when I click on it, 
it actually loads an interface. So uh, did it load that? No, it didn't load that. Let's try again. Now it's working. So in all fairness, I ticked everything that was available in that list because I wanted to show you what it can do. But what I don't like about this feature is that in that drop down list, we actually had a very nice hierarchy. It told me what everything was. Here are the filters, here are the sheets, here are all the other things. But then here, that kind of reasoning goes completely out the window and we can't see what anything is. So if the user is not familiar with these icons, and to be fair, uh, an end, end user won't know what these icons are because they don't build dashboards. Why would they know that this is a tiled icon? Why would they know that this is a filter icon? They've kind of been introduced to this icon communication, but that's not something that ever been sort of familiar with. The filters is probably the only thing they might have seen in a dashboard, but everything else is completely new to them. So they won't know exactly what these icons mean. And I think it would help just to have a little bit of a, uh, like a hierarchy in there so they could collapse, open certain bits, uh, and then maybe save the setting. There's sort of no save button here, and it would be nice if that save button actually spoke to the custom view feature that Tableau mentioned in the description. So let's go ahead here and let's just try a few things. So let's say uh, add filters. You see, this is a weird one because I'm actually able to show and hide the control for showing and hiding filters. It's a bit of a weird one. If a user disables that, how do they get it back? I, I just, I don't know why that's an option. So um, we can kind of, we can come back to that. Um, days to ship, this is a chart. So it's weirdly sort of pull all the charts at the top. Uh, the horizontal tiled container that just takes everything with it. Uh, On-premise shipment trends. What is this? This this is an interesting one. Uh, what is this particular item actually? This must be. Oh wow! What is this? Is this a title? Is this a title? It is a title. You can just see my uh, face over here. Uh, if I go to that, you can just see that it's <laughs> that's that must be the icon for a title. Uh, we'll we'll leave that on. Um, but then the filter capability is here, and I'm not able to add filters that I can't see in the data set. Let's say I wanted to add a, I don't know, a postcode filter to this data set. That's actually available in this data set, or city is available in this data set, but we don't have that as a filter here. So this feature doesn't really let you add filters from the data source into the dashboard. What it really is, is a show and hide filter. It's not even a show and hide filters thing, because you can see here it's showing and hiding elements on my dashboard. So what this should really be called is a dashboard show and hide element extension. And that's what it really does. It lets you hide elements of your dashboards. It just so happens that filters are one of those elements because here it seems to even hide charts. This is, this you would argue is part of dynamic zone visibility. It's a capability that's sort of built into that. But here <laughs> you can't, you kind of get it as one tick box. So if you've got zone visibility because you want to, you know, let, let people choose which charts they want to use, honestly, just if you could load this add filters button right at the, the point where you load a dashboard and they could just choose what charts they want to see and boom, they're ready to go. And that could do a much simpler job of that than uh, zone visibility. Probably not as nice and not as interactive, but it would still do the job. But yeah, you can even hide whole tiled sections. And so this is this sounds like a great feature, but then when you really dig into it, I think it's just lacking that extra mile. Like it's just lacking that extra sort of um, in 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 sort of app design. And when you talk about technology, they always call, call it delight, uh, as it were. It's lacking that little bit of delight to make this what it actually sounds like, uh, a way for users to add filters that don't currently exist on the dashboard to the dashboard and let them choose what they want to replace the current filters with. So at the moment, I couldn't add the city filter. I've shown you that already. Um, maybe I'm using it wrong. I, that that is always possible. I've only <laughs> I've only just made the video, even though this came out a long, long time ago. But um, what is also interesting is this didn't sort of pop into my mind. I didn't see a use case for this. I didn't see someone in the community using this to great effect. You know, to to, to even prompt me to make a video sooner than I did. So super interesting feature. Don't sleep on it because it can help fix certain problems. If you want users to be able to choose certain filters, this would be a really good way to do it. One thing I wonder is if, 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 for example, let's go back into editing this. Let's put this on the top right. Let's go back into editing this. Um, if I enable preview mode, let's go into uh, preview mode. Is that? Uh, no, 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 no. Where is the preview mode here? Where is the preview mode? This must be the preview mode. Open and edit this working desktop. I don't want to do that. Where is the preview mode? I have no idea where the preview mode. This is like this is the problem with web edit. How how do I just preview this? How do I preview this? Uh, 
I don't know. Okay, let's try something else. Let's... Okay, so what I've done there is I held Option on my Mac, and I clicked on the filter, which basically, I think, makes it behave as if it's actually in, in, in like a preview mode. Then, if I go and hide these filters, okay, then I publish this up. Perfect. Then I come to my dashboard. I refresh this. This should all disappear. There we go. And now the user can add filters, but they already existed. <laughs> if we look at the workflow of what I had to do as an author, I actually had to add them in, then disable them, then I could add them in. So that's that I think is what, what they're really sort of showcasing this feature uh, with. Um, so yeah, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below what you think of this. Um, it's super interesting. I like this kind of uh, capability. It's weird that it's an extension. Um, extensions have this sort of, uh, I guess, uh, uh, tainted history because when they initially launched, they weren't previously sandboxed. So a sandbox extension just means that this extension doesn't need to communicate uh, through the internet with anything at all. It's basically very secure and Tableau themselves have validated this security. And um, I think what it technically also means is that the extension itself can't communicate with the outside world. It doesn't need to communicate with the outside world to work. It just works on its own. Um, so yeah, super interesting. Let me know what you think of uh, this extension. Let me know if you're using it in your organization, what use cases you might be already using it for. And yeah, um, hopefully hopefully you like this very informal video. I simply forgot to make this video, so um, I'm glad I covered it. But it's also, it's an interesting feature because I, I just don't think it does what it's supposed to. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.